The transformation of a carboxylic acid into an ester is real common in organic chemistry and widely used industrially. Treatment of a carboxylic acid with a small alcohol like methanol can make the ester. Water is a byproduct. A major issue? This reaction is very slow, so we need to use a catalyst to make it faster. The first thing that might come to mind is reaction with a better nucleophile using basic conditions. Using a base to remove the proton, we would have a much better nucleophile. So the picture is thinking that this nucleophile would add to the carbonyl. We've seen that in nucleophilic acyl substitution. But there's something terribly wrong with this idea. Because carboxylic acids are acids, this proton will be removed by the methoxide acting as a base. So we would picture the loss of this proton, formation of carboxylate, and then it's game over, because now we have a negatively charged carbonyl compound, and nucleophiles aren't going to be attracted to negative charge. We need to abandon the idea of using base to make this reaction faster, and use an acid catalyst instead. This is known as the Fischer esterification. It's widely used. It's extremely effective. Very high yields, essentially 100%, can be achieved by using an excess of the alcohol to push the equilibrium to the right. Like other nucleophilic additions to carbonyl, this is a reversible reaction and the conditions will establish an equilibrium. But that equilibrium can be pushed entirely to the right. Yields approaching 100% are common by using a large excess of the alcohol and removing the water. Other acids can be used. Peritoluene sulfonic acid called tosic acid is common also. This is very much like sulfuric acid, and HCl is also very common. Other alcohols can be used, but because we need to use a large excess that can be removed easily and needs to be cheap, this reaction typically is limited to use with methanol and ethanol. So we can make methyl esters and ethyl esters. Because it's such a good example of acid-catalyzed nucleophilic acyl substitution, we often look closely at the mechanism of this reaction. Unlike the substitution with negative nucleophiles, this is a multiple step reaction. But like the reaction with negative nucleophiles, there are two key steps. Addition of the nucleophile to carbonyl, and then loss of the OH replaced by the nucleophile. So it's an addition, elimination, substitution mechanism, just like under negative nucleophile conditions. But it's catalyzed by acid. You see that the acid catalyzes two steps. It catalyzes the nucleophilic addition to carbonyl by making the carbonyl compound positively charged and more attractive to nucleophiles. Then you'll see that it catalyzes a loss of OH as the elimination step. The rate of nucleophilic addition to the carbonyl of this carboxylic acid is greatly enhanced when the carbonyl is protonated. You'll notice that in every step I write, I'll write an equilibrium because this is a reversible reaction. Mechanistically, every step in this mechanism is reversible. We picture the protonation of the carbonyl oxygen using an unshared pair of electrons, while the pair here stays with the conjugate base of this acid. There's a second resonant structure for this protonated carboxyl group. We picture the pi electrons moving up on oxygen and putting a positive charge on this carbon. It's especially useful to draw this second resonant structure because it points out that the nucleophile will be drawn to the positively charged carbon. In this case, the nucleophile is an alcohol. I'll use methanol as an example. So I picture an unshared pair of electrons from the oxygen being used to form a bond to carbon, which forms a tetrahedral intermediate. This carbon that was a carbonyl carbon now has four things attached to it. And the oxygen of the nucleophile, methanol, is protonated and so it's positively charged. The next step is loss of that proton to make a neutral molecule. It's easy to picture the conjugate base of the acid that was formed in that first step as the base that removes that proton while this pair of electrons stays with the oxygen to remove that positive charge. And now we have a product that has a tetrahedral carbon and has methoxy added to it. If this reminds you a lot of acid-catalyzed addition of alcohols to aldehydes and ketones, you're right. This looks very much like it. The only difference is that this intermediate has two OH groups on it, not just one. Like in that case, where it's a hemiacetal that's formed. In this case, 
one of those hydroxyl groups will be protonated by acid. Now we notice then that this protonated oxygen now can leave as water, a stable neutral molecule, and so it's a very good leaving group. And as it leaves, it leaves a positive charge on carbon. This is a particularly stable carbocation because it's resonance stabilized. We can draw two resonance structures stabilized by each oxygen, but one of them leads to product, so I'll draw it here. And we picture this resonance structure being formed by sharing an unshared pair of electrons from the hydroxyl group with the carbon. This puts the positive charge on oxygen, which looks a little strange for a resonance structure, but it's particularly stable because all atoms in this resonance structure have a filled outer shell. From here, it's just one short proton removal from formation of product. So we can picture the conjugate base of the acid removing a proton, as we saw up above. These electrons stay here to satisfy that positive charge, and we formed our ester. Overall, in this equilibrium process, it converts an acid to an ester. We've seen the replacement of a hydroxyl group, the carboxylic acid, by an alkoxy group, methoxy in this case, but it could be ethoxy. The conditions we use to make that happen are a large excess of the alcohol, and often we also remove water using some laboratory technique. The equilibrium between the carboxylic acid and the ester can be pushed entirely toward the ester. And finally, I want to point out the similarity between this and the general nucleophilic acyl substitution mechanism. In the general mechanism, we often picture the nucleophile as being negatively charged. And there are two key steps. The negatively charged nucleophile adds, and then the leaving group leaves leaving the nucleophile in this place. So we have an addition step and an elimination step. The same thing happens here. This is addition, and it occurs much more rapidly than otherwise because the carbonyl of that carboxylic acid is protonated. And here's the elimination step. The difference is, and this is why this mechanism makes you go crazy looking at it, is that there are one, two, three, and four Proton transfers. Each time a proton is added to make a compound more reactive, at some subsequent stage, that proton has to be removed. And in addition, it's important to remember that there are two places where resonance stabilization of an intermediate is important. In the first case, it helps us understand why the nucleophile so readily adds to carbon. And in the second case, it helps us understand why the water so readily leaves to form a carbocation.